What's up everybody? I hope you're all doing really well. I just spent the weekend down at the inaugural Strings Attached Guitar Festival here in Western Australia in the beautiful town of Margaret River. I had such a great time checking out all the workshops and performances, chatting to builders, chatting to people who were from all over the world to check out some of the beautiful guitars that they had there. And I wanna share some of my highlights with you guys. I really liked the way this festival was able to strike a balance between being really accessible to the general public and being really detailed for guitar nerds like me. You had some big Australian and international artists come out and perform and share their experience, you know, kind of touring the world, making guitar-based music, as well as things like exhibitions, which were open to the public, featuring not only beautiful guitars, but guitar-inspired art. So I love the way that it was accessible and the way they integrated everything into the community rather than just being like a trade show style thing where you sort of go in one door and out the other they had events happening all the way through the town and the general areas and they were able to kind of incorporate that community element which i think is so important to music into everything but at the same time you had the detail that guitar nerds like myself love where whether it was somebody like larry mitchell coming out from the united states to give a keynote speech and talk about everything from the way he uses effects to his experience and long career playing guitar for a living which was super inspiring as well as the ability to go and chat to builders from everybody like Ormsby Guitars who are the biggest guitar manufacturer in Australia at the moment to people literally making one-off instruments that they were fretting as they were driving cross-country to come to this event uh, like Francis Jerome who I've got an interview with coming up later in the week that I can't wait to share with you guys but I really want to put the focus on some of the uh, smaller, lesser known builders here. So I want to show you guys some of the really, really cool stuff coming out of Western Australia and Australia. Let's check out some of these really unique instruments. And yes, I'm going to play a shovel through an Axe FX at some point. My weapon of choice is cigar box guitar. Uh, why? Because I'm lazy and I don't have to finger fret, but it comes with a certain amount of traditionality. So when we look down here, <laughs> Life started for a single string diddly bow. It is a pool key, yes. Traditionally, the blues forefathers created from an African instrument. And then they developed into a two string, and then finally into the three string. And so, just by necessity meets reality, is they couldn't, didn't have the money to, to buy a guitar, so they found things that were readily available. So a cigar box were everywhere, and three foot is the standard length on them, but that's a picket fence. They used to steal a picket fence pail and uh, make those cigars. So they literally started from early beginning. That's a diddly bow. Flip that around, you've got Bo Diddley. That's how he evolved into the Bo Diddley character that he was. 
and that's why his guitar shapes throughout all the blues have been a rectangle shape as a signature for cigar box. I think I just learnt more about the history of guitar music in the last 45 seconds than I have in the rest of my life. <laughs> it's key. So all the greats have done it. Um, you know, look at Buddy Guy. He's played at uh, Muddy Waters, have owned one. Um, even now, Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, he loves his unit. Um, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp's a big fan of Cigar Box guitar as well. He plays them as well. So even right now. Now this is surely a, a unique... The... Uh, it started by chance. I, there's a fellow in America called um, Richard Johnson who had a, a shovel guitar and it's a big famous YouTube clip at the moment. Um, it's a, it is a bit of a quirky, fun thing, but at the same time, it just proves that you can actually create an instrument out of pretty much anything if you put your mind to it. G'day, my name's Scotty. I build pedals here in Market River, custom designed and custom built by me from the ground up. Um, to find me, I do have a Facebook page under the name Flux Electric. It is these wooden pedals, uh, is probably my signature, is building, building uh, clones of old school pedals into sort of modern day or sort of retro looking enclosures like that. And um, over here we've got the little light activated wire that we've been playing with. Projects here, which is a valve overdrivers, and we've got these little mini valve amp here, this is one watt valve amp. How oh, cool is that? Very cool. but it's like I'm like feeling it through my chest yeah. which is people um, often have that experience when they play my guitars and a lot of that's to do with the solid laminating lining on the inside so the perimeter of the guitar is like a drum rim essentially yeah I've like Whereas, not experienced this before it's also just because I work really hard to get the back to sympathetically resonate with the face right. and that's what gives it a nice three dimensional sound yeah good day I'm, I'm Mike or otherwise known as Hoss I'm from Dog Box Guitars I make the primarily Wisenborn style guitars. This is uh, the latest one in the um, in the kennel, as I like to say. Australian blackwood sourced from the Otway Ranges, simply because the traditional wood used is uh, koa, and koa and blackwood are, are directly related. They're basically the same tree. I've given it a little bit of my own style. Like I've, I've gone to a slot of headstock and a. a cheating pigs poking up. The, the original national tricones all had the, the machine heads pointing up. And for the want of owning a tricone resonator guitar, yeah, that's so cool. I've incorporated one inside um, the Weizenborn. So there's the three aluminium spun cones which are from National Company. I've got those straight through from the state. But I've just been amazed that it's just got such great tonal quality as well. It's got a little extra honk because of the, the resonator cones in it. Um, it electrifies uh, through a pickup, it's beautifully clean, but yet it has the capacity of using overdrive or distortion and the thing growls as good as any.
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed the clip. I do have to say a massive thanks to Dan and the rest of the crew down at Strings Attached for being so accommodating over the weekend and to everybody that I got to hang out with and meet. I had such a great time. I really, really look forward to them doing this again and I can't wait to bring you guys more content from this particular festival. So keep your eyes peeled over the next week or two and I'll have some really cool stuff up.